Hey everyone, this is Player One, and I'm coming to you with part two of my 360 or Xbox 360 collection. So today I'm gonna go from letters E uh, through M, like Mary. All right, let's just jump right in. So first, right off the bat, I have four up here for you to see: Eat Lead, EDF 2017 Instinct Armageddon, El Shaddai Ascension of the Metatron, and N War. So I haven't played this one yet. I've heard that the game itself is not great, the gameplay, but it's funny as heck, you know, it's like a, a bunch of like one-liners and an action kind of old school 80s, 90s action movie. So that should be, that's going to be an interesting thing just to enjoy that part of it. EDF 2017 I actually haven't played, or I played very little, but I played a, a, a shit ton of the EDF 4.1, which is a, the PS4 remake or HD remaster, if you can call it an HD remaster of EDF 2025 which is part two to this so I've been wanting to go back since I've more or less haven't 100% complete every level but I've almost beat every level on almost every difficulty of the EDF 4.1 on the PS4 I've been wanting to go back and just play a little bit of EDF 2017 so I might do that over the break which by the way if you guys are interested in hearing what I'm gonna be playing over you know like holiday December January break let me know maybe I'll do a video of what I'm up to during that time so continuing on, continuing on, El Shaddai Ascension, I haven't played it yet, but I've seen enough of it to see it's, it's a very cool game. It's kind of like a weird, artistic, not cell shading, but like colorful looking game. So that's something I'm interested in, it's kind of an action, uh, third person action game. Like think of God of War or DMC, Devil May Cry. Then End War, I also haven't played yet, but that game was big back in the day because you could talk into the mic and give your your people orders, and it's kind of like a like a strategy game, like Command and Conquer. So that's kind of cool. That's something I'm gonna definitely try out at some point. So as we go along with this, the next couple games, I'm sure many of you are gonna recognize. Well, we'll hold off those for a second. First, check these out. So we have Enemy Front. Enslaved, Odyssey to the West, and Eternal Sonata. So Enemy Front, it's not a budget title per se, but it's not your big Call of Duty World War II kind of situation either. It's somewhere in between, but it's basically typical sh FPS shooter of the 360 generation where you're fighting and killing Nazis. But it's actually pretty good, I've enjoyed it. Um, I haven't beat the whole thing yet, but I'm, I'm in the process of playing through that one. Enslaved is a total hidden gem. I think by now it's, I wouldn't know if I would even call it Hidden Gem anymore because everybody knows of its status, but it's a cool game worth experiencing. It has a very interesting story, kind of post-apocalyptic and you can't really say much more on that without spoiling it, but it's pretty interesting. Eternal Sonata I haven't played too much of, that's like your typical JRPG, kind of pretty JRPG. It's not, don't think of like a serious JRPG, but I've, a lot of people say good things about it. And if you're into music and that kind of thing, music plays, a, I think, a significant role in how everything works. So that's kind of cool. Alright. So next, these are the games I was talking about that everybody should recognize. And first we have Fable 2, Fable 3, Fable Journey. Yeah, the Kinect game. And Fallout 3, Game of the Year Edition, and Fallout New Vegas. So Fable 2, I love Fable 2. Just like I love Fable 1 on the Xbox. But I really like this one because it was just a cool westernish RPG. And what I mean by that is if there's you know that people talk about RPGs like JRPG and RPG and that they're different. It's just I think the way things are approached differently. I feel like in a JRPG, you're put into this character and you live and experience the character. That's kind of what JRPGs seem to be about for me. As opposed to Western RPGs, which like Fallout or Fable, where the you're put into this character, but the world moves and changes based on what you do. That seems to be the two differences, if I had to put a difference. So JRPGs being the one that you, you're put into this story that's more or less set in stone and that's what you experience. Western RPGs being where you, the world seems to conform to your decisions kind of situation. Which each one has pros and cons. But, as far as Fable is concerned, I really like Fable 2. I enjoyed playing through it. I thought the ending was a little bit of a cliffhanger, but that's okay. A good cliffhanger, I, I don't mind at all. Fable 3, however, it started great. I loved... Who doesn't love the idea of putting a, a, a band together? You know what I mean? 
getting the best warriors. You know, that's why Mass Effect 3, which we'll talk about later, was such a cool thing. Or, or so many of these games where you're just putting people together. Like the Avengers or whatever, right? But I was pretty disappointed with the ending. And that kind of got me a little bit. Just because after doing having to go through so much, putting Kingdom, man managing Kingdom, making sure uh, to make decisions whether to have more money for battle or have people suffer more but be more ready for the final battle that final battle I thought was pretty disappointing so that's a little bit of a shame do I think it's worth playing absolutely I think you should play it it doesn't complete the story and that's where Fable I think has lacked the most that story arc that seemed to start from part one to part two never really led to something big like a scene that was trying to get to so that's a shame but so be it Fable Journey on Connect. I haven't played it I bought a Kinect used for like 10 bucks and I have yet to ever hook it up. Maybe one day I'll hook it up and just try out some of these games, but I don't have high hopes that it's going to be any good. So I haven't really had a whole lot of incentive to do so. Here's Fallout 3 and New Vegas. So first Fallout 3. Fallout 3 was a game I adopted pretty late. I saw people playing and I saw the graphics and I was like, holy shit, this sucks, right? This is gonna, not going to be fun. I was so mistaken. First of all, as far as this edition is concerned, the game of the year, if this is the one you have to get, because the DLC is, is totally worth it. Not all of them are, but the Pit and Mother, Mothership Seda, which is, the Pit is like you get stuck in this place that they have like slaves and you're, mis you're figuring out the mystery of these monsters that are killing like slaves and all that. And Mother Zeta is you're basically stuck on, a, on an alien ship. But the game itself, I love this game. This has to be one of my favorite games ever. Just because I love experiencing the world. There's few games that you can go out and just walk around and have a good time literally walking around and just seeing what the heck is going to pop up next, what cave you're going to find, what other vault or what city. It was just absolutely great. The overarching story is okay. It's enough to keep you entertained and you get an idea of what's going on, but obviously that's not the focus. And if we're talking about that difference between JRPGs and RP and Western RPGs, this is a fully Western RPG. Basically, you get what you put into it. Don't expect a strong narrative like you would in maybe a great JRPG, but it is, it's just, it's such a fun game to play and such a fun game to experience. Fallout New Vegas came out, I think, shortly after Fallout 3, and most people were disappointed because it's the same graphics, the same everything, but this taking place in, like, the, I think, like, Maryland, Washington, D.C., Virginia area, and this takes place in New Vegas, Las Vegas and California, Nevada area. So I actually have played a lot of this. I might even go back and play it because there's something weird about this old way of, and I, I say old, but the, the combat in these versus the new Fallout 4 that's kind of interesting. It's not great, it's not a shooter, it's not an action game by any means, but it was still fun to play. And this game added some things like weapons being damaged and all kind of stuff. Is it as good as Fallout 3? I don't think so. I really liked the way the world Fallout 3 wor looked. This was like had this opaque-ish kind of yellowish tint to everything. But is it worth experiencing? I think so. And I think today when you can get these games cheap, I enjoyed them. I can tell you I think I enjoyed these much more than Fallout 4. And that's maybe a conversation for another video. But I was thoroughly disappointed with Fallout 4. Mainly because it's... I don't think it's acceptable the graphics or the quality of the game that we got now in this generation uh it's just it just wasn't acceptable with all the glitches and all the crap that happened with that game so i was really disappointed with that but again that can be a conversation for another day all right let's see what we got all right so right here these four games we have far cry 3 fear which stands it's like an acronym it stands for first encounter assault recon I guess that, that's the team name. Fear Files, which is kind of DLC to this, but they had a separate this for it if you wanted it. And Fear 2, Project Origin. So, Far Cry 3 I haven't played, but like everyone, I've seen those videos of like the main bad guy. He's awesome. Far Cry, Ubisoft has this thing, or maybe not all their games, but for Far Cry, where they make these awesome bad guys that you barely see, which is similar to what happened in Far Cry 4. But I, I still want to play through it, just maybe get the experience. This is probably one of those games because they're also similar, I think anyway. I might go in and play just to get through a story, maybe a couple side missions, but just play because I want to see the bad guy. Fear. 
This is all my current games that I'm playing. I've played it, this is weird too, pretty slowly throughout a long time, maybe like the past year, to try to get through it. It's such a cool game. It's such an old game too. I think it's an old PC game originally first and then they released it on the consoles. Graphics are very old. It's like an old school shooter where you can carry a ton of guns instead of just two guns, which I love. And you have the, the, the basic gimmick of it is you have this glitch, this not glitch, uh, this power up that makes everything slow down because you, you can enhance it yourself or whatever and you see things slow. Imagine like Neo slowing down the Matrix or whatever. It's, it's awesome. I really enjoyed it and I'm almost done. I'm literally in the last level so I'll be beating that as soon as I get some time, probably in the next week or so. And that'll be some of the, one of the games that I'm trying to beat over the winter. I highly recommend it. It's an old school first person shooter and I think it, the, the cool, unique thing about it is you don't get many uh, first person shooters that are this creepy. So it's pretty, it's not scary per se, but there are moments that kind of creep you out a little bit. Obviously who, who isn't scared of seeing a little like girl like from the ring walking around. And, I don't, uh, and if you want to know the story basically, long story short, they've been doing experiments on this, on this little girl and she has telepathic powers. And so she's kind of pissed and I won't say more than that, but it's interesting to see what, what comes out of that. That makes sense. And Fear 2, obviously, I haven't played it because I haven't beat part one yet. So, alright. See if you can see that. Let me move this up. Alright. So, here we have six games. We have the Final Fantasy Lightning series, or whatever you want to call it. Final Fantasy 13, 13 2, and Lightning Returns. Then the first Templar, Face of the North Star, North Star, and Face of the North Star 2. So first I'm gonna talk about the Final Fantasy 13. These are not everybody's favorite Final Fantasy. I know that, we all know that. They made three, I don't know why, but I'll say this. I haven't played, I haven't beat this yet. I do wanna just complete it just to play it. Because I really like the voice actress. She's, if you don't know, she's Liara from Mass Effect, so it's always cool to hear that voice. But they're not the best Final Fantasies. I, I, I tend to agree with that. If you're the kind of person that likes really open world Final Fantasies, this is not going to be for you. It's much more linear. But it's still, you know, if it's a Final Fantasy game, it has some cool concepts, and it's something I want to get through. I don't know if I can make it through the other two, just because I've seen enough of it to not love it just yet. But I'm sure sometime in the future, it's something I get to. The first Templar is kind of like your, I'd say, budget third-person action game, if you could imagine that. I don't really know what it's about. I've only played the intro, but it, it caught my attention when I when I when I saw it, just because it had some cool things of action and you're fighting. Uh, like I guess you're trying to find out the mystery of what's going on with the Templar, or something like that. Fist of the North Star. If you don't know about these games, one and two, they're kind of interesting because they're like Dynasty Warriors. They're based on I think an old anime or a manga. But they're like dynasty warriors, but you kick that's like super gory. So as you're as you're fighting a group of enemies, you do these cool moves and you just rip people apart. <laughs> so it's kind of like a mature rated dynasty warriors. The story is okay. It's cool to see the old manga kind of at 80s anime looking uh, drawings and cutscenes where are like comic book style. But this these are games, I don't know if I would call them hidden gems, maybe. I don't know how popular they are, but I definitely think this is something people should experience, especially if you like anime and you like Dynasty Warriors, this is probably one of the few Dynasty Warrior games that's really out there where they feel significantly different than most of the, those other type of games, if that makes sense. Alright, so this next group of games, we have Flat Out Ultimate Carnage. This is Forza 3. And unfortunately, I got that from that buy to get one free from Best Buy, so unfortunately I don't have the case. And Frontline Fuels of, Fuels of War. Fuel of War. I haven't played any of these three. I know this is a shooter. Uh, I imagine this is a racing game, kind of like crazy stunts and stuff like that. Nothing too exciting for that. 
and Forza. I've never gotten too much into the Forza games. Again, I like the more kind of arcade-like games. I think that's more of like a simulator, if I'm not mistaken. But they're there, so I'm sure one day I'll play them or I'll try my best to do so. Alright, let's see. Alright, so I'm sure everybody knows about these. Here's more or less the Gears of War Saga. Not counting the one on the Xbox One, which I do not own. So you have Gears of War 1, 2, 3, and Gears of War Judgment. So 1, when I play this, I think this is one of those games that was revolutionary. It was a third person cover shooter, and so many games have come after that that have tried to copy it, and some, some successfully, some not so successfully. But the point is, it was revolutionary when it came out, and it was a shit ton of fun. I love this game when it came out. Gears of War 2 was another great game. I didn't think they could do it twice in a row uh, where it was this fun and it really pushed the envelope and I saw a significant change from Gears of War 1. That's important because a lot of these franchises you see one game and there isn't enough of a change from one game to another to justify them. Think Call of Duty, right? There's nothing really happening. But these games, Gears of War 1 and 2, the significant changes that took place, not just graphics were a little bit better. But the multiplayer adding horde mode, which now what game doesn't have horde mode, right? Well, this is a bad boy, I think, that really put horde mode on the map. Um, I played this for hours and hours at horde mode online, talking to people, having fun. And then also, the story itself, man, it was just so good. Some of the scenes, I don't want to give away any spoilers if you haven't played it, but some of the scenes were just so emotional, it really got me into it. And you really don't get that those kind of emotions from shooters, unfortunately. They, there's this bad rep that shooters are just these action-heavy kind of Michael Bay type games that let's just blow everything up and kill everyone. Well, no, you can have that, which we all enjoy, but you, you can also have some emotion and some story within it. And this game, I think, really pulled that off. So these two I love. I can't say the same about part three. But part three just wasn't good to me. I don't like how it ended. I don't like the story DLC that came after it. I didn't even bother getting any of that. I don't like... Um, that they tried to do kind of like Halo Flood shit where let's, let's introduce some third weird mutating mutating faction to fight in. It was just, it just didn't happen. If we're talking about the clear increase of quality from one to two, that was just not present for three. It really didn't do anything for me. Gears of War Judgment, I haven't played yet. I don't hear great things about it. I think most people would say that the game sucks. Uh, I might just play just to experience Gears of Wars again, Gears of War again, because I don't see myself getting an Xbox One anytime soon. I don't think it's worth it just yet. Maybe when the Scorpio comes out. But I might play that again just to get some experience. I was thinking about actually playing through these again, or at least part one and part two again, because I really liked them so much. I wonder if anybody's still playing online, because that might be cool to experience again. And that's the sad thing about online games. Um, you know, you experience when you buy the game and you played it back then, it was such a great experience, but it's hard to get people to play them anymore. So that's always kind of a sad thing, but at least I have the memories of that, if that makes sense. Hopefully that's not too cheesy. Alright. So here we have Ghostbusters, a video game, Ghost Recon, Ghost Recon Future Soldier, sorry, Ghost Recon Advanced War Warfighter Future Soldier, Golden Axe Beast Rider, Grand Theft Auto 4, Green Lightning, Green Lightning, Green Lantern, Rise of the Manhunters. So first, Ghostbusters. This Ghostbusters game is very good. I would say it's the authentic Ghostbusters game. What I mean by that is it has all the voices. You're basically put in the in the in the in the place of a fifth Ghostbuster, and you go through crazy wacky story of dealing with what's going on. And I can say. As a, as a huge fan of the Ghostbuster movies, the original two, not the garbage that came out recently, right? But the original two movies that offered not just comedy, but some seriousness to it. And if you go back and watch those movies today, if you haven't seen them in a while, you, you'll see that there's a lot of great character interaction between the, all, the, all the different characters. And there's a lot of deep hidden things between in, within the movie. So check that out. But back to the game. This game is awesome. It, it, it's, just, it's just so much fun. And, I, and I'm almost, I played it through and I'm, I almost beat the game. I have like a couple levels left, I think, and levels left. I've been wanting to go back and, and not wanting to, I'm going to go back. Probably maybe, maybe I can force myself over the break because I got sidetracked by some other game. I don't remember what it was, but this is, this game is awesome. It's worth experience. All right. These two Ghost Recon games, I haven't played through them, 
that one says connect made better with connect that was part of those games that made better with connect where they gave you like an option like sky i think skyrim was like that where you can say force run do or whatever however you say it or or mass effect where you can say the commands nothing too special there but i haven't played any of these ghost recon games yet golden uh, axe beast rider is kind of like another third person action game not medieval time but think about swords and and all that and golden Golden Axe Beast Rider, or Golden Axe probably, is old, you know, I think back in the Genesis days they still existed, so you should, the franchise is pretty old itself. Grand Theft Auto 4, probably needs no introduction, a great game, most of the Grand Theft Autos are great, um, so just play through it, it's a fun game, and I like these games not just because of the open world and the crazy shit you can do, but they actually have pretty fun stories to check out, so I like Grand Theft Auto 4. Green Lantern, Rise of the Manhunters. You guys are probably going to make fun of me, but I really, really enjoyed this game. I know a lot of people say they didn't like the movie. I actually thought the movie was good. If you thought, let me put it this way. I think this movie was better than a lot of the crap that DC has been doing lately. That's for sure. What I would say, if you're, if you're one of those people that really hated the movie, think about what the movie offered. The, the movie offered some, some cool powers that you really don't see. And the, the real problem is at the end they did the stupid shit where there's a big cloud that you fight at the end. Just like, just like uh, Fantastic Four did the, same, did the same thing. There was a, this idea of a big cloud. These Hollywood people have no ingenuity. You know what I mean? Watch an anime and learn something. Get some, get some creativity. But the point is the mo this is not really based on the movie. I think it does have Ryan Reynolds. But it's not based on the movie. It's just like a separate side story. And it was actually a lot of fun. Is it a great game? No. But buy to get one free, especially now you can get it cheap, yeah, it's totally worth playing. Just because, I don't know about you guys, but I've always liked Green Lantern, the character, just because the powers are so cool. You can do whatever his mind can think of. So that's kind of cool, and there's a lot of cool powers within the game. And it is in 3D, and this isn't some Mickey Mouse 3D either. This is like legitly real 3D. So if you have a 3D TV, you're going to see some fun 3D gameplay. If you don't have a 3D TV, it comes with, if you can get it complete, with these glasses. Which are not great 3D, but it's enough for you to experience the game in 3D and enjoy it. So uh, that's a game I recommend. If you haven't given it a shot and you're looking for games from based on movies that are better than the typical horrible games that come out, I think this is one of those games that are worth giving a shot. If you like Green Lantern, if that makes sense. Alright, so this next group of games, everybody knows, Halo. I have Halo, this is the Anniversary Edition, which is just like the HD remake of the original one. I haven't played through it again, but I have very fond memories of playing co-op with this, couch co-op, with Player 2 and other friends of mine. And it was just a wonderful experience, so I, I kind of just want to play it again for nostalgia. It probably will feel kind of old uh, today, just the mechanics and everything, but I think ba back when I played on the Xbox, it just blew my mind. It was so much fun. I don't even know how many times I beat that campaign on Legendary. It was a lot of fun, so I just wanted to pick that up again. Halo 3 ODST. This was an interesting game. It was the only game, I think, where you don't play as a Spartan, or at least of the of the shooter, first-person shooter versions, that you don't play as a Spartan. And I liked it. It was an interesting story, kind of a side story. I think you're in Mombasa, in Africa. And so it was cool. It didn't really do a big much of an experience but it was a cool little side story i liked it then i have halo reach halo reach was one of those games that i'll say this the collector's edition of halo reach is probably one of the best collector's editions i've ever seen though that 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 thing was awesome if you haven't checked that out uh do so just do a quick google search that collector's edition was awesome um but the game itself was a little disappointing to me because i didn't i enjoyed it i like playing as the other spartans but i felt all the deaths were for the most part either stupid just put there to give you a feeling that somebody died or they weren't really written that well they felt uh, they didn't feel like they had the impact that they could have there was one death that really stuck out to me which I uh, I don't know if I should spoil this or not I'll say this I won't say who died but one of those Spartans gets sniped and it was a completely su big surprise and it just got to me right away but most of the other deaths just kind of happened they didn't really have the emotional impact they could have it would have been written a little bit better or maybe directed, I don't know. Halo Wars, I haven't played through Halo Wars yet. I know there's another Halo Wars coming out. It's kind of a strategy game. 
uh, it seems interesting. It's something I'd like to try at some point. I like those strategy command and conquer uh, type games, so I might give that a shot at some point. This is Halo 4. Halo 4 was 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 actually a pretty good game, I think. The reason being, it 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 was weak in the sense that the gameplay was the same as all the other Halos, right? Or let's say Halo 3 or whatever. The graphics were a little bit better. I think it was towards the end of the 360. It was probably some of the better graphics of the 360, but it, it just felt a little old and stale, the gameplay itself. You know, it was like the typical gameplay. You have your, your small enemies come out, you kill the small enemies, you kill the grunts, then you kill the elites, and then you move up that way, and it just didn't feel very fun in gameplay-wise. I was bored a lot of the time. However, the story I loved, I love Cortana's role and in this with Master Chief because that's what sells the series, let's be honest. They haven't really developed the other characters or even got into the lore of the governments and, and all the dirty shit that, that had been going on. But the relationship of Cortana and Master Chief is just great in this in this game. And the movie scenes, they were all the, incredibly well done. I didn't even care about the main villain in this one. I just want to see more of Cortana and Master Chief and their relationship. So I really liked it, this game because of that. What you don't see up here is a Halo 3 because I've actually misplaced my copy. Of which, frankly, I don't give a shit. I hated Halo 3. I was one of those people that, that to this day, again, just like Gears of War, we had Halo 1. Then Halo 2 really pushed that envelope, and then Halo 3 just kind of fucked it up. So that's just that's that was just my opinion about Halo 3. I don't I don't, I don't have it. I had it at some point. I know I do actually. It's probably in a box somewhere, but I don't care about getting it again. I won't be worried about that because it was frankly a huge disappointment for me. Not only graphics wise, by that point, the game it was kind of disgusting what was happening with the Halo, but also because the story was stupid. It it was like a like. They were trying to redo Halo 1, ending with that stupid ball again. It's like they changed the guns, they changed the weapons, all of a sudden you're, you're a Spartan but you can only carry one needler just because. I mean there was so much shit wrong with that game. I really wasn't happy with it. Alright, here's the next group. There's We have Homefront, Infinite Undiscovery, Injustice Gods Among Us, Jericho, and Just Cause 2. So Homefront... This is, they, I guess we have another home for now on PS4, which wasn't very good. This one was interesting because this stayed, stayed more in line with the Red Dawn. If you recognize that old movie, again, just like the new home front's not very good, the new Red Dawn was kind of crappy too. So I'm talking about the old Red Dawn movie. That movie is a classic. If you haven't checked it out, go ahead and do that. But this is more in line with that home front. They even do a little bit of an Easter egg because in one of the missions when you're going through the high, sc uh, high school, it's called the, I think Wolverines are the mascots which are the mascots from the Red Dawn movie. So there's a lot of cool things. But what's disappointing about this is I got to the end of the game and I thought it, I thought there was like another, there was more left. So it felt not just short, but there was no real climax. The climax battle felt like it should have been the middle of a game, not the final battle. So that was a little disappointing. But they really sold the atmosphere of like, you know, the, the tyrannical, uh, I think it was Russians and Chinese, I forgot who it was in this home front, that attack and just took over the US and, and you have rebels fighting back, you know. That's so, that this game is worth checking out. The multiplayer for this was, was very fun too. They added this cool thing where you would play and if you got a lot of kills, I forgot what they called it, but if you got a lot of kills, they, a, a bounty would be on your head and so the entire other team would try to go after you for a bonus. But then if your team defended you, the longer your bonus went up, it would help your team out for more points. So it was a cool little gimmick, but I liked it. I enjoyed playing a lot of the, a lot of that multiplayer for this game. Infinite Undiscovery, I haven't played yet. I've heard some good things about it, but I really haven't played, so I can't say much about it. I think it's just like an RPG. Injustice, I love this game. I play, I beat that maybe three times, I think, which is not is rare for me. I try my best not to beat a game that long, just because I have so many other games to get to. But I absolutely love this game for two reasons. Number one, it's Mortal Kombat like game. I like Mortal Kombat. Uh, number two, I like the story. It's a Mortal Kombat type game with a story that's very good. It's straight up good, like a good comic book story. It's a good, it should be a movie. That's the movie they should be making rather than the shit that they're trying to do now. Um, it's just a great story and you can see a lot of how now they're trying to copy a lot of these designs from Injustice in the new uh, Justice League movies. Of course, they're not doing anything like the actual game. They're ruining them, but whatever. <laughs> That's a conversation for another day. 
but as far as this is concerned, if you haven't played through this, you need to get yourself a copy. That's a great game. Plus, as superheroes, it's cool to see them. It's a little bit uh, outlandish, of course. You know, you have the Joker that can fight Superman because he drank some pill and now he's superhuman. But the game is awesome, and the graphics are actually pretty good for when they came out. Jericho. This is a weird game. It's a first-person shooter, but like squad-based, kind of. You can switch between squad mates. There are special squad trying to... F the world is getting destroyed by this being. And they're trying to rescue the world and seeing what's happening. And I don't want to ruin too much of the story, but... Imagine... It's kind of like Fear. It's a shooter that's really creepy. It has a lot of... You're, you're fighting these things like this, like these demons. Kind of reminds you of The Suffering from Xbox. The original Xbox. These demons and monsters, so... This is actually a very cool game. This is probably a hidden gem because I don't think a lot of people know about this. This is a game worth checking out. In fact, if you're interested, let me know. Maybe I'll do a review of that. I'd love to actually beat it. I didn't get to beat it. I got stuck in a boss and it turned out my copy is all, was all scratched. So uh, I went to buy another copy, which is this one, but I never got back into it after that. So I have to start from the beginning again. Just Cause 2 probably doesn't need much introduction. Sorry. Probably doesn't need much introduction. But basically open world kind of madness just cause 3 came out not so long ago but that was a little bit of a disappointment uh, uh, is what i understand of it i don't own it but for just cause 2 you know it's it's a it's a fun game story wise eh, it's not really there it's more if you just want to go in and blow shit up this is this is probably closer to that michael bay kind of action game that we're talking that we talked about before where it's just so you can blow shit up and have fun doing that all right Maybe we'll stop at L today. Yeah, let's do that. Here. Let me put some games up. Alright, here we go. So we have Cameo Elements of Power, Kane and Lynch, Dead Men, Kane and Lynch 2, LA Noir, Left 4 Dead, and Left 4 Dead 2. Alright, so there's a lot to talk about within these. Cameo, I think, was a launch title. I actually didn't own this till last year i bought it on a buy to get one free i played a little bit just i, I always try out the games because you never know if a game works or not you always want to try it out and it looked very cool it's kind of a cartoony game but you, you're you're this girl who has the power to turn into all these monsters but you got hurt or something so you forgot your power and as you go along you get your powers back and you turn to more of these monsters to figure out puzzles and stuff like that it's not a kid game necessarily like for children but it's a young game it is fun though that's something you might want to just try for fun Kane and Lynch and Kane and Lynch 2. These games are third person shooters. You're the bad boy in these. That's the whole thing. You're the bad guy. You're trying to just survive. Shit happens. You're trying to do a bank heist and stuff just goes wrong. But they're fun games because they're two funny ass characters. They're, they're really bad guys. So you play through that. I haven't played part 2. I did play part 1 and I enjoyed it. LA Noir. I think this is a revolutionary game. I don't know how well it did. Uh, when it came out, and I didn't buy it. You see, I got it for $9.99, so I bought it much later after it came out. But man, this game, the animation in the faces is incredible. The whole thing about this game is you play a detective trying to figure out murder mysteries, and you solve mysteries while trying to solve the bigger mystery of who's this killer in LA. But, and it takes place like in, I think what is it, like 1950s, 1960s, or 1940s, something like that. But it's so cool because the whole thing is about, the whole deal is you, figure, you find clues. It's almost like a visual novel type game, kind of. You move around, you find clues, and then you interrogate people. And with the clues, you use those to interrogate people. But the, the gimmick is that it's all about facial animation. So they, they put the facial animation of all these different actors and really good facial animation. I'm, I'm, I mean, like, it, it almost look like real people in the way they move. Obviously not in the graphics. But the way they move to the point that you're supposed to look at them and tell if they're lying based on how they move, what they scratch, what blinks, what twitches. And they're really, it's not a, it's not a gimmick. It's, it really is a good enough that you can use the movements and observing people to start learning if they're lying or not. So it's almost like a simulator, if that makes sense. It's, it's very cool. I like it. Left 4 Dead 1 and 2. There's not much I can say about those. I spent hours and hours playing those. I really, when, when this game first came out, I thought this was this will solve the itch of zombies, you know, like running around shooting zombies, which it did. Again, like I've said before, I think I said in the other video about Call of Duty, we need a real zombie game. And by, that, by what I mean by that is like a military style shooter in the sense that it's that clean, like a Call of Duty or a Battlefield, but with a story based on survival of zombies. That I would like to see has never been done really, at least not effectively. 
But regardless, these two games are awesome. Unfortunately, I've popped this in recently, like in the last couple months, and there's not a lot of people playing. Which, by the way, if you guys ever want to play with me, keep, let me let me have your um, your gamer tag, and maybe we can get set up a session or whatever. But for Left 4 Dead, I popped this in, and there's not a lot of people playing. But I really like this one. It was just such a fun game. I remember hours uh, playing co-op with people I didn't even know. Sometimes even I play, I had I made friends with this one guy who was from Japan. And he didn't know English, so we would just communicate with the flashlight so you can blink. But man, it was so much fun. Left 4 Dead 2 was the same. They tried to expand the story. I think this this kind of, I don't think they ever tell you this, the, where this took place, but you get the impression it's kind of like just different places. It can be like in the city or whatever. And they try like in New York and then somewhere else. They tried to make it seem like it has a story from one map to a dozen uh, another, but it really doesn't. This one is more like New Orleans is where they tried to base this one on. But it was still a lot of fun. Both games, highly recommended. You need to play with somebody though. It does have AI characters that follow you because it's, it's like a, this. It's like four people versus zombies. You need to play with somebody else because the AI just kind of sucks, and it's not that fun by yourself. You need to play with other people. But if you can, if you haven't played these, worth checking out. And you know what? If you have a PC, you'll probably do a better job of finding people to play with on PC. So that'll be something. That that uh, if you again if you haven't experienced it you really must all right we're coming to the end here because we're gonna I think stop on the end of L just so the video is not too long now, what do we got here we got legendary Indiana the original adventures uh, Indiana 2 really the Legos and lollipop chainsaw legendary this is a cool game it's kind of like a budget first person shooter and I shouldn't say budget because it doesn't feel cheap it just didn't make, it kind of failed, and it's a tough game to play, it's a bitch of a game. But I think it's an interesting premise. If I, rem if I remember correctly, you're like a guy trying on a heist, and you open up Pandora's box, which gives you powers, but it unleashes all these monsters and demons onto the world, so you're trying to survive it. But th it's actually a pretty hard game. You have to fight like minotaurs and legendary creatures, and so it's, it's, it's a cool mix between modern world, you're in the city, and fighting those creatures like like here you have griffins and stuff but it's actually pretty hard I liked it though it's worth checking out these two Lego Indiana games I haven't really played them you'll notice that throughout my collection I have a ton of Lego games I haven't played through them I, I will at some point but you, you know most Lego games play the exact same so you're not getting a surprise it's more of kind of like a skin of, ex of playing through the world or a movie you like lollipop chainsaw you can tell right away what this game is about it's about a, a good-looking girl fighting zombies. That's how it is. Um, I don't know how... I haven't played it yet. I don't know how good the game is. But it looks interesting. It's kind of like a quirky, funny, uh, over-the-top game. You're a cheerleader and you have your boyfriend's head that got killed. And he talks in the game. And so you just kind of survive the zombie, I guess, apocalypse. with And there's bosses and shit like that. I don't really know too much about it. I've seen the gameplay. I'll play it at some point. Alright. And I think finally, is that right? Yeah. Finally, we have our last four games. We have War in the North, Lost Odyssey, Lost Planet, and Lost Planet 2. So, let's start with the Lost Planet first. I actually have Lost Planet 3 on PS3. And maybe I'll do that collection. You know, if you guys, let me know if you like these videos. A lot of you have already told me you like the videos, so maybe I'll get into this a little bit more. But tell me if you'd like to see another system. If you do, I might want to do PS3 next, just because that's easiest to get to. I don't have a ton of space in my house where I live right now, so a lot of stuff is either on a shelf or like in a cabinet kind of situation. But if you want to see more of these, let me know, and maybe I'll do PS3 next. Uh, back to this. So point in two, I haven't played part two. I know these had. I think this one is the one that added multiplayer. Unfortunately, I probably won't get to experience that because by the time I play it, or even now if I play, I don't know if people still online. Lost Planet one though, it was kind of cool when it came out. Uh, it's like a third-person shooter, but you're in you're in this you're in another planet. I think they were trying to terraform it. It's like every there's monsters that come out because you're trying to terraform it, and there's a, a species already living there, and so these monsters are there, and you have to try to survive the cold environment and figure out kind of what's going on. But it's cool. I think it's worth experience. Pretty cheap, and you see, I got it two ninety nine, and now I guarantee you that I was buy to get on free because I basically don't buy games by themselves when they're used. I always try to get by to get them free. Unless it's some great deal or I'm getting like a garage sale kind of thing. Uh, Lost Odyssey. 
I think this is an underrated game. And that's weird to say because if you watch any of these famous YouTubers, you know, guys talk about games that are legit, talking about retro games and stuff like that. I'm sure they all say that Lost Odyssey is great. So it's really just the mass public in general will probably say this game wasn't great or whatever. You have to do a lot of reading in the game, but there are a few games that got me so emotional as much as Lost Odyssey did. That's a, it's an RPG worth experiencing, I'll say that. I don't remember how long it is. I think it's probably around the 40, 45 hour mark. But get your hands on a copy of this before they become rare. If we'll never, I don't know if 360 games will ever ever be super rare because they were produced much more than older games like old PS1 games and such. But I do think this is probably one of the ones that are going to be worth some money in the future just because it's kind of a niche title that has really grown in popularity over the years. And you can get it super cheap. So check that out if you haven't. War in the North. I haven't played War in the North. It's based on Lord of the Rings. Um, it looked okay. I'm a huge Lord of the Rings fan. I really liked uh, the original three movies. I, I, full disclosure, I haven't read the books. I tried reading the first one and it just, I couldn't get through this, that. I think it was Radagast, was that right? Or that's the, the forest person, oh man. I just couldn't get through it. But I did love the first three movies. Those are probably one of some of my favorite movies ever. So I just got this game because it's a little range, you get to experience being in the world. So I figured I'd try it and it'd be a cool thing to have. By the way, I don't like the new Hobbit movies. I didn't like them at all. I was very disappointed with those. All right, so I guess that would be the end of that. That, stop, that stops at L, so next time, if time permits, I'll do. I'll finish the collection out from M and on, and then I also have some digital games that I'll show. I'm, I haven't figured out how to do that. Maybe I'll put some gameplay on, because there's a number of digital games I've gotten through the game, gaming with gold or whatever they call it, the free games every month. And also I've gotten them just because I bought a couple of live arcade games, Xbox Live Arcade. So that's that. Let me know if you enjoyed it. I really last time I got a bunch of comments, so that's I know it's cheesy, but I love I love answering comments. I love hearing from you guys. So if you have any comments, please let me know. Any questions? If you see any game that I talked about that you either you played or or I, or I, even especially if I if I said I hadn't played it and and you're interested in just leaving me your two cents, please do so. So one of the some guy commented on the last video. Um, and said to let me know that Alone in the Dark wasn't any good. So if that's the case, let me know because then I won't, I won't waste my time if you guys say it's not good. Um, so that would be great to hear from you guys. Otherwise, please like the video. Uh, feel free to subscribe if you enjoy watching this stuff. And if you want to see more of these type of videos or anything else, let me know again in the comments. And check out some of the other stuff. I'm going to try as before we end the year to do some more of these collection videos and maybe a couple more reviews. So that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching.